Today is July the 13th, 2022. My name is Tanya Fitchum. I'm with Oklahoma State University with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. With me today is Nick Hoheisel, uh, who has been the strength and conditioning coach for the OSU Cowboy, uh, Cowgirls basketball program since 2010. Is that correct? That is correct. And in 2020 was named a master strength and conditioning coach by the Collegiate Strength and Conditioning Coaches Association. Quite an accomplishment, I understand. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for being here today. We're in the OSU library and here on the OSU campus. And this interview will be part of our project we're calling the We Will Remember Promise. So by way of context, November 17th, 2011, a plane crash carrying four people associated with the women's basketball program at OSU. And the university and the Cowboy community vowed to always honor and to never forget Kurt Budke, Miranda Scherna, and Olin and Paula Brandstetter. Before we get to that chapter in OSU history, let's learn a little bit about you. Start wherever you like. Well, we'll start at the beginning. Um, I was born in Walton, Kansas, a little tiny town um, off of Highway 50 outside of Newton. Um, all of us kids from Walton go to Newton High School because we don't have a high school in Walton. Um, I think there's about 100 people in Walton. <clears throat> um, I grew up on a farm, um, riding horses, um, loving all the country life, doing all those things. Um, always loved sports, uh, played, played every sport I could growing up, um, but football was my passion. Um, so uh, out of high school, um, I had an opportunity to, uh, uh, I was, I, I was going to have to walk on, but I wanted to play division one football and um, took a trip to Kansas State University, uh, met Bill Snyder. And I knew from the minute I met that man, that's the person I wanted to play for. Um, just treated me like I was the most important recruit in the world, even though I was just going to be a, a guy walking on. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> and so walked on the Kansas State football team in 1998. Um, got to be part of some great teams, but more importantly, um, got to learn under Bill Snyder. Um, and uh, I will argue with anybody that, that he is the greatest college football coach of all time. Um, I absolutely love the man and, and the, the lessons that he's learned, that he taught me. Um, you know, I, I still use those in my coaching today. Uh, and he's, he's been a, a huge part of my life. <clears throat> You know, at that uh, that critical juncture, so, you know, being 18 year old and being on your own <laughs> for the first time and becoming a wildcat, and, right? That's right. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's kind of funny being, you know, graduating from Kansas State and you know, working at Oklahoma State. Well, it's you know, Stillwater, Manhattan are very similar towns and very similar good people. Uh, so I feel very comfortable in Stillwater because of my time in Manhattan. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, you can't hate K Staters just like you can't you can't hate um, Oakey Staters. So it's a uh, it's 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 a good fit for me here. But um, uh, after college, um, wait before you get after yeah. college. In college, you did you accomplished quite a few things. From what I do, you want to talk about any of those, like the squad's overachiever? Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> yeah. and that football lift, lifter of the year. Yeah, I uh, and uh, the Bob Cope Memorial Award. So uh, yeah, I uh, brag on yourself a little bit. It's okay. <laughs> you know, being a walk on. Um, my, my path to getting on the field was going to be through the weight room and getting stronger and more physical. Um, I came in at, uh, at a little over 200 pounds and uh, ended up playing my last three years at about 255 pounds. Um, I had a great strength coach in college, a man named Rod Cole, who I'm very close with today. Um, and if it wasn't for Coach Cole and his strength and conditioning program, I, I, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to get on the field. Um, you know. Uh, just the, the physical attributes that he helped me achieve, but on top of that, the confidence and um, kind of foreshadowing. It's where I fell in love with the weight room and, and I saw the difference it can make in a young person's life. Uh, and, uh, and you know, like I said, if, if it wasn't for the weight room, I couldn't have achieved my goals of playing division one athletics. And so, you know, now being a strength coach at this level, I try to give that passion to these kids and, and let them know that, Hey, if you keep working hard, that, you know, that the end you can, you can, it, this is going to help you a ton. I know from firsthand experience how much, how important the, 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 the weight training is. Um, and coach Cole is a, is, he's a really good man. And one of the things that I've set forth in my, my goals, uh, as a strength and conditioning coach is I want these kids that I work with to have the same experience that I had. Uh, I want them to have that positive experience. Uh, that, that, that they left it all out there, that there, there was nothing, you know, that I couldn't have done more. I can't, you don't look back and say, boy, I wish I would have, 
you know, tried harder at workouts or done these things because I know Coach Cole got everything out of me. Coach Snyder got everything out of me on the football field. And, and I left Kansas State with no regrets. And I hope that uh, I just I hope that I can give these the, the, the student athletes at Oklahoma State that I work with the same experience, uh, the same positive experience that they can walk away saying I gave it everything I had and uh, let the chips fall where they may now. <laughs> Do you have lessons to share with them about about managing academics versus getting better on the field? Well, I, I mean, academics come first. Well, you were student athletes first, <clears throat> but there is time management. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there was a, I think it was Lou Holtz that said it. You've got three aspects. You've got your school, you've got your athletics, and you got your social life. You can't be great at all three. So you can, you can be great at two of them. So you're going to have to decide which two you're going to be great at. Right. <laughs> That doesn't mean, and obviously we hope that they choose academics and athletics and put yep. social life third. And that doesn't mean you can't enjoy life and have friends and uh, a significant other. But at the same token, we need to know what comes first and why we're here. Um, so, you know, I do talk to the kids. Hey, you know, it's it's tough, but it's just a great life lesson that, uh, you know, learn how to manage that time. Okay, I've got weight training from seven to eight. I got class at from nine to one. I got practice at three o'clock. Uh, till you know five and then you know I got to eat dinner and then I got to study you know so I've got to figure out you know my day here and uh, and you know, I may not have time to <laughs> to go on a date tonight because I got to got to get all these things done but uh, yeah. So they you visit you once a day? Do they visit you once a day or how? Um, so it, well it, so much of it depends on the, the season okay. um, yeah, so for instance um, right now with women's basketball we're in a summer training period um, so I see the girls four days a week, um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, and, and then they have practice on certain days. We can't practice as much or work out as much in the summertime um, because of uh, NCAA rules, but uh, uh, you know, we'll plan out our, our workouts. Um, and then you know, once the fall hits, then we'll, we'll kind of be in the same phase in terms of preseason training. And then you know, your season starts. And then you, you plan your training around your games and all those different factors. But I typically will see them, you know, daily uh, in some capacity, whether it's in the weight room or uh, for, for fitness or just just at practice. Or, you know, maybe somebody wants to come and do some extra stretching or whatever, you know, some extra footwork or some extra fitness with me. So yeah, I usually see the kids pretty much every day. Okay. So in, in college, what position did you play? I was a fullback. Fullback. And then what was your major? Well, so interestingly enough, um, my major was my undergrad uh, degree is in business. Um, I did not fully know what I wanted to do uh, when I got to college. And uh, as the years go on with athletics, you you know, you, you have to you kind of get going down a road. And it's in when you're in athletics, it's kind of hard to switch majors because then you kind of have to double major. I don't know how all that works, uh, you know, with compliance, you know, to stay eligible. I don't know exactly, but I guess it was just and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, so I just kind of went down this business route and and. Uh, but I knew I always had a passion for the weight room and and uh, I spent one year out of college uh, my first year. Uh, doing sales and uh, that wasn't for me. <laughs> I didn't have a passion for that and, and uh, I didn't enjoy life and uh, and uh, so <clears throat> I talked to one of my strength coaches from college and he said, hey, there's an opening at Northwest Missouri State University. Uh, he, he said uh, as, a, a, as a graduate assistant in the weight room, he goes, is you you know we talked in the past about you becoming a strength coach. I, he said, is that something you're interested in? I said, yeah, that's a after seeing the other side that this is it for me. Yes, this, you know, determined that this is the route I wanted to go. Um, so he said, well, um, get your resume together. He goes, that's where I went to did my uh, graduate work. He said, so I'll, I'll make some calls for you. And um, they really went the Kansas State strength coaches really went to bat for me. Um, in 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 references on my on my behalf and and said you know because I know that at the time they were kind of like well this guy doesn't have an undergrad in in you know exercise science and you know he are you sure and they're like trust us you'll you'll get him on board and he'll do the work for you so uh, I owe a great deal of gratitude to Carl Castleman and, and Rod Cole at Kansas State and Mark Overchrome because um, they really went to bat for me at Northwest Missouri State to to help me get on there. 
Um, so I ended up getting a master's degree from Northwest Missouri State um, in, uh, in exercise science. Okay. So I, you know, and, and I, I had to fill in the gaps of, you know, okay, I didn't have this undergrad training. So, you know, I had to work extra hard in college and in, in graduate school. But the thing about graduate school versus my undergrad is I knew what my end goal was. Mm -hmm. I knew where I was going to go. I had a clear vision that I wanted to be a strength coach. Here's the path. Here's the things I need to learn. You know, uh, I'd been through a great college strength and conditioning program, so I knew what we were doing. Now I needed to fill in the why we do all these things. And it, so does that make sense that, that okay, sense. I, I'd seen, obviously seen it for fir firsthand for five years now. Okay. Here's why coach Cole had us doing this exercise. Here's the muscles. Here's the, the science behind it. And I, I filled in those gaps in, in, in graduate school. So I'm really uh, thankful and appreciative of Northwest Missouri state for giving me that opportunity. And, and, uh, Rich Wright uh, was my boss up there. He's a head strength coach. And uh, the opportunity he gave me and the, the chance that he took on me, because, you know, he could he didn't have to take that chance on me, but uh, he did. And I, I'm very appreciative of him for, for taking that chance on me. And I wouldn't be here today if he hadn't taken that chance. <laughs> so you had to learn anatomy and physiology yeah. and all that good stuff. Yeah. Had had your parents been in into anything like this the as far as physical exercise and such? Yeah. Um, so my father, um, my father was a high school football coach uh, okay. and he played college football and he was always a big weight room guy. Um, and, you know, even before it really became, came in vogue, he, he always valued the weight room. And, and so, you know, growing up, we always, you know, kind of did little training and things of that nature. And, and, uh, you know, always, like I said, playing sports with him. And so, um, yeah, he instilled in that, that early into me, the, the value of the weight room. And, and I really started lifting weights about, I, I was a sixth grader, I remember. And, you know, you, you obviously aren't doing heavy weights and those things, but, you know, I really, really took a, took a liking to it. I remember as a sixth grader and, uh, you know, it carried throughout high school and then college and those things. And, and my mother, um, is a very active person as well. Um, you know, and like I said, she's, she was more on the horse side of things and, and, you know, and, and doing a lot of that with me and, and, but always active. So, you know, and, and, uh, one of the great things about growing up where I grew up on the farm, um, is you're always doing, uh, maybe not necessarily training, but you're always bucking bales in the summer, uh, fixing fence, uh, you know, all those, those manual labor things. Uh, my dad's a great craftsman, so he was always building something. So I was always his right hand man to, you know, all right, we've got to carry this, uh, you know, these boards over here and then you hold them in place and I'll nail and do all the, these things. So um, there's always very, uh, very active and very physical. So uh, I like to say I've got that, that farm kid strength, <laughs> that functional strength. That, that, and, uh, you know, and then. And then I was always for hire in high school. Um, I worked on hay crews. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've ever seen the, the hay monster, uh, yeah. you know, the big nose. And, and so our, you know, um, I was on three different hay crews in, in high school throughout my high school years. And uh, so, you know, okay, hey, they'd call me and hey, hey Nick, we got a job. Uh, we got, you know, 40 acres of hay bales to pick up over at, you know, wherever it was. We'll meet over there at six tomorrow morning and you work until you're done, you know. And, and uh, the, the, uh, the going rate at that time was 10 cents a bale. Oh, gosh. Uh, so I, I will never forget that 10 cents a bale. So, um, you know, I don't know, you start doing the math, uh, you know, you picked up uh, 2000 bales and that's not a bad day's work, right? <laughs> and they're about what, 35 pounds a piece? Oh boy, I can't remember exactly, you know. See, my dad, he'd make them heavier. <laughs> Because he's like, well, okay, you know, it's less work. You know, you just lift it once, and it's, as opposed, you lift one heavy one as opposed to five smaller ones. <laughs> I did it one day, and that was enough. I was so so, so sore. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, some of those hay lofts. I always remember we one job in particular. Uh, so the from the field to the the barn was uh, was two miles. Obviously, the the hay monster can't drive very fast, so uh, the, the 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 foreman on the job, Mr. Rucker, would drive the hay monster, and then the two two workers we'd drive the truck, right? So every other trip, you took a, a, a you know about a ten minute nap in the truck, right, while your buddy drove the truck and followed the hay monster, and then you know uh, you got a ten minute nap on the way, and so Mr. Rucker was always good because then the hay lofts obviously are hot, you know, up in that barn so every other trip you know you make let's say you make 10 trips every other trip you got to uh 
be the guy on the, on the outside, just pulling the pulling the bales off, sticking them on the on the chute, and as they send them up to the loft. But then every other trip, you know, you had to be up in the up in the hay loft, <laughs> grabbing the bales and stacking them up there. So, <laughs> but you know, you always got the nice little rotations and those things. And well, that was thoughtful. Yeah. <laughs> Well, how young were you when you drove your first tractor? Or oh, gosh. Remember? Yeah, we were just talking about this yesterday. It was about seven or eight. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, it's kind of funny because I don't know if kids, you know, I, I hate to sound like old man Hohazel here, but, uh, you know, you, learned how to, you have to learn how to drive a clutch, right? Uh, right. At, at that young age and, you know, having foot and all that. And most cars were, were standard back in those days. You know, there's no, you know, very rarely was it an automatic. So, you know, and. Uh, so I grew up driving with clutches everywhere and, you know, <laughs> I'm thankful we don't have to do that today yeah. unless we just want to. <laughs> so would you get to, to save your money and spend it how you wanted? Or did you open a bank account and start saving for college? Uh, I started saving, um, spent some of it, you know, yeah, as kids will do, but, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. Started saving up money. So did you have siblings? Yep. I have one older sister. Yeah. And what did she end up? doing with her um so holly my sister actually went to oklahoma state for two years Yay. um and then uh she's a nurse so I, I she ended up going back to wichita state to finish her nursing degree and i know part of the uh part of that decision was based on the fact that she met uh her husband um and he he lived back in the wichita area so instead of burning up uh, my 35 every weekend, she just said, I can get a great degree, uh, nursing degree at Wichita State. So this, you know, and they knew they were gonna get married. So it's kind of, you know, made sense and everything. And uh, so Holly is a nurse. Um, she worked for years um, at uh, different hospitals up there in the Wichita area. And then uh, she, uh, once she had her kids, she started working at the, the local uh, middle schools just to kind of, you know, get her summer hours that she could spend with the girls and her, her daughters and everything. But yep, she's got her and her husband and, uh, and two daughters live up in, in Halstead, Kansas. Okay. Um, and actually the oldest daughter, uh, Josie, it is a, uh, just finished her freshman year at Oklahoma state. Okay. So it's keeping some orange in, yeah. this, oh, in yeah. the family. Yeah. Yeah. So you had been to campus before you actually came to work here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I actually took a recruiting trip down here in, um, uh, in spring of 1998, uh, for football and, uh, and, uh, I, you know, no offense to the staff at that time. I don't mean, <laughs> the guy, but you know, like I said, coach Snyder blew me away. So I, that's where I wanted to go. Uh, but yeah, I, I came down here with my sister, uh, you know, and helped her move in her dorm and move in 1994, 1995. So, uh, you know, I came down here for a couple football games and those things. And I wanted to come to a basketball game. I remember, but, she, uh, she, that was before the expansion of Gallagher. And, you, you could know, not get a ticket. Could not get a ticket. No. <laughs> and you know, obviously final four teams and Coach Sutton. So it just, yeah, there was not yeah. a ticket available. <laughs> well, you had some orange experience before. Mm -hmm. So that explains kind of how, how maybe you got here. So let's switch back to your career then. After you left with your master's, then take us from, from, from that point. Um, so I got a, a so I got to Northwest Missouri State in um, August of 2004, mm -hmm. and I was set to finish my master's degree in, uh, uh, let's see, been spring of 2005, in May of 2005, yes, no, so, or so, 2006, rather, 2006. Okay. Um, so, going into fall of 2005, I had nine hours to complete. So three of those hours were turning in my thesis. Okay. Uh, three of those hours were taking comprehensive exams. And then I had one more class, physical class to take. So I got a call in early August or late July of 2005, been late July. Um, from a former assistant at Kansas State University named Scott Gaddikin. He had just taken the head job, the head strength and conditioning uh, job at the University of Idaho, and he had an opening. So he called my strength coach, Rod Cole. Coach Cole said, hey, Nick Hoheisel is starting out. You know, this is an entry level position. Be a great guy for you. So got in touch with Coach Gaddikin, or Coach Gaddikin got in touch with me. I can't remember how that all worked. But anyway, he said, hey, uh, we did an interview. He said, Obviously, we're not going to fly you up here, uh, this, but if you want the job, he goes, Coach Cole recommends you. I, you know, 
I'm, it's yours if, if this is what you'd like to do. So I accepted the job. But before I could accept, I asked Northwest Missouri State, I said, hey, I have, they said, turn in your paper, that's, your, that's three hours, that's easy. Fly back, take your comprehensive exams, there's three hours, that's easy. I said, okay, what about these other three hours that I have this class? And this is before online classes were a thing. So they're like, we'll work with you. They said, we want our graduates in the workforce. Mm -hmm. The point of school is to get a job, right? right. <laughs> the point of school is not school. I mean, you know, yeah. overall, it's to, it's they said, so we want you out there working. So they said, what we'll do is we'll just do some stuff online, mail you some, physically mail you some stuff. And and so they were they were very gracious with me to help me get, uh, get my first job. So... Um, I actually accepted the job and was working before I completed my master's degree, um, but I diligently turned in all my, my homework assignments and mailed everything back and passed the class. And then I flew back in November, took my comprehensive exams, passed that. So I officially graduated from grad school um, in December of 2005 mm -hmm. while I was at the University of Idaho. So I kind of have this overlap in my career. They say, well, how'd you graduate? But you were here. And it's about <laughs> Um, so I spent, uh, August of 2005, um, to, um, June of 2006 and, you know, I'm, I, I'm a homebody. I, I like the Midwest, um, and Idaho, you know, it's, it's a little bit farther out there. Uh, it's, uh, um, you know, and, uh, you know, the time zone differences, you know, I, I didn't like that as well. And. Uh, you know, just a little different way of life. Um, they weren't not as passionate about sports and those things out there, which I mean, that's fine. I don't mean to talk negative, but it just wasn't my cup of tea out there. But it was great experience. I, I will never I, I will always be grateful for them that I got my first full time job and uh, they helped me uh, get that. But uh, I, I was definitely looking um, and, um, you know, I, like I said, I hope that doesn't come off as negative against Idaho or the university or anything like that. But I, 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 uh, I was definitely in a position where I, I felt like I wanted to, you know, find, find the next step now. Um, so a job came open at Wichita state. Close um, to home. Okay. So, right, right on. So, um, I, I went in, uh, with, you know, with everything I had to get that job. And, um, I'll never forget, uh, you know, so I'm calling the strength coaches at Kansas State. Hey, what do I need to do? You know, I got my resume. I'm turning everything in. And I'll never forget one of the strength coaches said to me, uh, he said, do you really want this job? I said, 100%. He said, have you done everything you can to get this job? And uh, I said, well, I think so. He goes, he goes, have you had Coach Snyder call on your behalf? I said, no. He goes, if you really want this job, you have Coach Snyder call on your behalf. I said, okay. So. I, I called coach and uh, coach Snyder. The reason I love that man so much is no matter if you were, you know, the lowest man on the roster or the Heisman trophy quarterback, you were all important to him mm -hmm. and he returns your call. And, and within the day he gets back to you and, and everybody's important to him. And I called coach and asked him if he would make a, uh, a reference call to me at Wichita state. And uh, he, he, did within <laughs> within 10 minutes he was on the phone with the athletic director at Wichita State calling uh, as a reference for me and so um, I know that's not the only reason I got the, the, the job at Wichita State but it was very important that you know and he he definitely again went to bat for me and uh, and, and uh, gave me a great reference um, so I, I was offered the job and accepted the uh, strength and conditioning job at Wichita State um, started there and it was I know I, I left University of Idaho at the end of uh, June, my, you know, my year, my pay was up at the end of June. So it's kind of their fiscal year and Wichita state started, you know, their fiscal year right after July 4th. So I can't remember, you know, maybe July 5th or 6th was my first official uh, day at Wichita state, but, uh, yeah, 2006, um, spent four years at Wichita state, um, the 06, 07 year, uh, seven, eight, eight, nine and nine, 10, uh, years I was up there at Wichita state. Which programs were you working for? Oh boy. Well, I don't know how long your tape recording goes, but uh, so I, I'll just go through the years. 15 hours. Okay. We're good. All right. I'll go through the years. So my first year at Wichita State, I had vol women's volleyball, men's and women's tennis, men's and women's golf, and track. My second year, I picked up baseball. Dropped 
men's golf and we hired an, and so they went over to a different strength coach because I added this team. So kind of subtracted this team and track. We hired a, a graduate assistant to take over the track program. Then my third year, I dropped men's tennis, but added women's basketball. Um, yeah. So then my fourth year, I kept all those same teams, volleyball, women's basketball, women's tennis, women's golf, baseball, and then added track back onto the plate. <laughs> so, so how many students would that have been? Quite a, quite oh a few. Boy, I don't, I don't even, a couple of hundred at least. Yeah. So, um, Gosh. but again, you talk about time management, you just yeah. figure out when, when the kids can train and <laughs> get them in. Well, each sport's different muscles, I suppose. Yeah. So yeah. You, you have to keep, you'd have to know it all. Yeah. Well, and different, different seasons too, which is nice because, so, you know, in the fall volleyball's in season. So they're only, they're only training with me two days a week. Or at that time, basketball is training with me five days a week and baseball is training with me five days a week. And then, you know, you shift to the basketball goes in season, volleyball goes out of season, baseball goes in season, tennis, you know. So, you know, it's kind of just these different moving parts back and forth of these different teams going in and out of season. So, And it's mostly groups or is it one one on ones? Well, uh, it's a lot, mostly groups. Um, uh, you know, but you do a lot of one. You also ha have your one-on-one -on -one work. Um, you know, kids will want to come do some extra work with you, and that's that's great. You know, you never want to deny a kid the opportunity to do work. Um, but as I got more experience with baseball, that's a that's an interesting sport um, because the way it works is you have you know with your pitchers, you know you hit, they're all on different rotation. Okay, so you have a guy that pitches on Friday night, a guy that pitches on Saturday, a guy that pitches on Sunday, and then a guy that pitches on Wednesday. So your workout program is, is different for all these guys that pitch on all these different days. <laughs> so you do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with those guys because obviously you don't want to have, you know, this guy doing the same training, you know, on Thursday if he's pitching on Friday as opposed to the guy that's not going to pitch on Sunday so he can do something different on Thursday. So, you know... <laughs> You have to, so you have to know their schedules. So you work with the coach, or yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You have yeah, to figure you have all that out. Talk somehow. to your pitching coach, and hey, you know your lineup. And sometimes they don't want to. <laughs> like, I don't know who's pitching yet. Okay, I'll just let me know what you know. <laughs> so, would how early in the day would your your work begin? Uh, first group is always at six a.m. Six a.m. Yep, and then go till when? Oh boy, back in those days, uh, you know you're usually getting done with your day about six or seven. Oh, so five days a week or yeah. is it every on weekends? Uh, you know, baseball, you're working weekends too. So, uh, it's but, more than a 40 hour a week. Yeah, job. I, I usually get my 40 in by about Wednesday. <laughs> when you get your work in, in, in between. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's all right. It's a, it was an exciting time, a fun time, you know? And, Did uh, you have a sport you liked the best from, from the, from your work perspective? You know, um, so here's something I found with strength and conditioning coaching. So much of it isn't dependent on the sport as opposed to the coaching, the coaches. So I never thought I'd, I'd enjoy tennis. Okay. But uh, Chris Young was the women's tennis coach at, at Wichita State at the time. And he's currently the head women's coach at Oklahoma State. And we hit it off. I love the way he ran his program. We communicate. We work well together. And so tennis has always been one of my favorite sports. Well, a lot of that has to do with Chris, the culture that he creates within his program, the emphasis that he puts on training, the trust that he has in me, the way we work together. So, you know, if you'd have told me when I started in 2004 that, that you know, that you'd, you'd, you'd love working with t uh, women's tennis, I'd have called you crazy. But, <laughs> but I, I absolutely love working with women's tennis. Um, you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, working with Gene Stevenson in the baseball program at Wichita State. I mean, that was a huge honor for me growing up, watching watching all those great Wichita State baseball teams play. Um, you know, Chris Lamb, Wichita State volleyball, um, loved that guy to death. Uh, he's, you know, um, and uh, probably the most influential coach that I've ever had, and I mean no disrespect to the, any of the other coaches because I've worked with some great coaches, but was Tom Jager at the University of Idaho. 
uh, he was the swimming coach. And I don't know if you know the name, Tom Jager. Uh, Tom uh, has six, six, uh, uh, six gold medals in the Olympics. Um, he, uh, he held the, uh, uh, he was on a, an Olympic uh, real or a, a world championship relay team that never lost for 14 years, I think was the number. Uh, he was the fastest man in water. I mean, I've seen videos of him swimming and I mean, he's, you know, I always like to tease Tom cause he's a very humble, humble man. Um, are you the greatest swimmer of all time? He's like, Oh, well, you know, I mean, I could be in the conversation, but there's this guy and this guy in different eras, you know, he will never, he'd never, you know, say that or anything, but he's, he's up there. And, and, uh, but the thing, the reason I say Tom was so influential on me is because as a young guy, you know, you, you, you have kind of this cookie cutter program, you know, uh, you don't really think about what's best for the individual sport. Well, Tom challenged me to think about swimming. No, think about our movements in swimming. Think about how we move. Think about the water. And he made me get in the pool with his team and swim. <laughs> and as I like to say, uh, growing up, swimming was a means of survival, not a, uh, you know, not a, not a sport, right? You know, you go in the, the creek and the farm and the lake and that, and, you know, it's just survival, not, not, uh, and so Tom challenged me to think like that. And at a young, as a, a young, at that point in my career, that was so important to me to, to start to think, okay, here's all these different angles it's not just straight on here's being specific for your sport and um, one of the things that he taught me that, that I always I thought about this as I train any other sport he had me he goes he asked me one time he goes so how much speed and agility work are you doing with my team and I go well, none they're swimmers why would I do speed and agility work on land with the team that swims right he goes he goes uh, well won't that make them better athletes to do speed and agility work I go yeah he goes well, make them better athletes. He goes, I'll worry about the swimming part. You worry about making them better athletes. Okay. So we did started doing the speed and agility work and, and, uh, and, uh, it was, it was, again, opens your mind up to think, okay, he'll worry about the swimming, the technique. I don't have to worry about that. I need to make these kids better athletes for him. Get that, get that car ready for the, for the driver. He'll drive the course. You just make it fast. Okay. And I've thought about that's been a lesson I've taken throughout my career. Um, you know, and then the other thing that he taught me, uh, he'd, uh, so they'd have the dual meet on, on like a Friday. And so, you know, we, he said, I want my team to work out with you Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m. Okay. He said, and so, you know, <clears throat> I call him and say, Hey, you know, coach, you know, you guys have this big dual meet on Friday night. I said, do you want me to back off on Friday? Do you want to just do some stretching, some kind of feel good? What do you want me to do? Because I want you to kill my team. I, mean, I, I want you to get after him. And uh, I said, okay, are you sure? He goes, it's Nick. He goes, we're not preparing for this dual meet. We're preparing for NCAA championships. He goes, my team at NCAA championships will have to swim multiple times a day. He goes, so if you get after him in the morning and then they swim at night, they're going to learn that. Okay. And they're going to be physically prepared for that and mentally prepared for that. <clears throat> Again, it was another great lesson to learn. Okay, this is we're, we're preparing for the end. We're not preparing for today. We have long term goals and to think long term. So I always thought that was another great lesson. So um, when I look back and think about, you know, <clears throat> you know, Tom was you know one of the most influential coaches, or probably at that point, and just because of where I met him in my career, probably the most influential coach I've ever been around. So you've had some some more than one mentor along the way. Mm -hmm. so that's 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 great. Yeah. yeah. And so football wasn't. Um, so I worked with football um, when I was at Northwest Missouri State at the University of Idaho. Uh, Wichita State does not have football. Oh, yeah. <coughs> um, I should know that. That's all right. Um, <laughs> the shocker. Yeah. Um, and I, but what I found early on is I really enjoy working with, you know, with some of these other teams mm -hmm. and. I love football and I mean no disrespect to football or football strength coaches, but I, I just really have enjoyed, you know, this path that I've been on. And uh, Coach Glass was very gracious with me that he, he gave me the opportunity to stay with football uh, here. But I chose to, you know, kind of go down a different road and, and make sure that I had give, uh, gave, a, <coughs> excuse me, gave a lot of time to women's basketball and my tennis programs here. So um, I really enjoyed working with, you know, some of the smaller sports like that. Talking too much. That's okay. <laughs> no, you're fine. So you were at Wichita State before you came here. Before you came here. Mm -hmm. 
So how did that come about? Um, so, uh, <coughs> so I was really close with Chris Young, our women's tennis coach, and uh, he came down here in uh, uh, in August or July, somewhere in there, summer of two thousand nine. Uh, and he was down here a year and, uh, he told me that he said, Hey, there's a, a job opening here <coughs> in Oklahoma state. He said, uh, he said, is that something you'd be interested in? I said, yeah, absolutely. Oklahoma state. Yeah. And, uh, he, and so he said, well, he goes, um, I'll talk to coach glass and, and, uh, you know, and, and so he got me in touch with, uh, with Rob Glass and Jake and then and, and Jake Manselman and and we set up an interview. Um, kind of the uh, the downside of the, the position when I first got here was that it was it was technically a, a paid internship position. Mm -hmm. So um, I was going to go from making a full time salary with benefits to intern money uh, and no benefits. Um, so I had to do some evaluating in my life. Um, but I ultimately knew that taking a step back would lead to 10 steps forward. <clears throat> um, so uh, I accepted the position and no guarantees were made to me at all. Uh, Coach Glass was as was from day one till, you know, 12 years later, he has always been upfront and honest with me. And, and I appreciate him for that. You know, but he told me, he said, you know, there's a possibility that this could be a full time position in a year. He said, again, I make you no guarantees. You're coming down here. You're taking a chance, uh, but you just make sure. You, uh, and he was upfront and honest with me about everything. So I said, "Yes, I'm willing to take that chance." And, and um, so that was uh, June of 2010 that I, I came to Oklahoma State. So I spent the first year at Oklahoma State, uh, the 10-11 season, as as a paid intern. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I I made some financial adjustments to my life. Uh, sold my car, you know, bought a lesser car, <coughs> eliminated car payment, you know, uh, no cable TV, things of that nature, you know, just whatever you had to do to get by. <coughs> uh, so, but then uh, in uh, the next summer, um, Coach Glass said that he got it approved to make my position full time. <coughs> and uh, he was able to promote me to a full time position then in. Um, I think it officially started in August of 2011. Would have been officially with uh, women's basketball. Yes, uh, so I was hel I was hel helping with football, and then my teams that I had I, I had women's basketball and men's and women's tennis. Okay, still didn't. And we don't have swimmers, so no, no swimmers. <laughs> I think they did at one time. I read somewhere, but is that right? Yeah, okay, back back in the day, they did. So you arrived on campus for that job in 2010, mm -hmm. summer 2010. Yep. And I usually ask what you thought of campus, but you'd already been yeah. here, so you knew <clears throat> first impressions. Yeah, I mean, I loved it. It was, uh, and you know, the funny thing is in my 12 years, I've seen so much expansion <coughs> in three areas. Obviously the athletic department in terms of our facilities have grown. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen the campus grow. And then I've seen Stillwater grow, uh, just crazy in my in my you know twelve years here. So. Where do you consider home? Stillwater. Stillwater. Yeah. yeah. So my my sister for Christmas this year um, got got us. Uh, she she knows a local woodworker, <coughs> and he made these um, these wood cutouts. They're you know about you know a foot a foot big. They're you know, and one of them is. Uh, a cutout of the state of Kansas. One out of one of them is a cutout of the, of the country of Brazil. My wife is from Brazil, and then one is a cutout of o the state of Oklahoma, and Oklahoma says home on it. So we've got it hanging on our wall. You know, she's from Brazil, I'm from Kansas, but Oklahoma is our home. So, <laughs> and I mean, both of our kids are you know were born here in Oklahoma. We got married in Oklahoma, so our kids are Oklahomans. So we are. <laughs> And you like orange. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely love it. I, so uh, let's switch gears a little bit. When do you recall meeting at Coach Bud Key for the first time? Yes. Um, so I got to got on board um, in summer of 2010. They had already started their summer workout program. So I kind of, so Jake Manselman, who was the men's basketball strength coach at that time, was kind of running their program. 
and I was like, we'll just keep it going for the summer, Jake. That you know, Jake's a phenomenal strength coach. I was like, you know, that's that's great. Just I'll I'll just help you out, get to know the girls. So I kind of really wasn't in charge of basketball just yet. I mean, I was and helping Jake and working with Jake, and Jake's a great person too. So I mean, there's no ego or conflict there. We just worked together right immediately right off the bat. <clears throat> And met with Coach Budke in the summertime, and <clears throat> got to know him. And and uh, the Coach Budke, so Jake told Coach Budke, he's like, "Hey, Nick's going to take over full time in the fall." <clears throat> and and Jake, you know, again, I've had a lot of people go to bat for me in my career, and and Coach Budke's like, "Okay, you know, Jake, if you really believe in this guy, that's good." So Coach Budke and I worked together, and and I showed him my workout plan for the fall, and he was happy with everything, and. And the kids got to know me in the summertime, so it was it was a smooth transition. So um, <clears throat> in the fall, of, you know, and so I met him in the summertime. I don't remember the exact day that we met for the first time, but you know, got to know each other. And and he was a and and as a boss, he was very hands off. Mm. You know, hey, you're this is your deal. So you get him in shape, uh, you train him, and I'll uh, you know I'll do the basketball part. So. <laughs> and how about Miranda? Um, met her, you know, right around the same time frame, and she was great too. You know, Miranda, uh, her role was the recruiting coordinator. So, in, you know, in, on a basketball staff, your recruiting coordinator is there a lot, but they're also on the road a lot because they're always out there. Okay, there's this high school game here that I got to go see. There's high school tournament here. You know, so you know, she was always on the go. I mean, she was she was a uh, her her. Uh, and her work ethic was legendary in the recruiting. Uh, you know, people knew her that she was a, she was a bulldog. She not 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 in a bad way, but she was she worked. She was going to get out there and, and meet the kids and get 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 uh, open doors and you know. <laughs> so. Well, from what I remember, the team was doing pretty well that uh, that season too. Yeah. My okay. So <clears throat> my first year, the ten eleven season. I'll take you back. So the nine ten season. They had a really good team. Andrea Riley, who I think you're going to talk to, All-American point guard. I mean, phenomenal player. <clears throat> and they had a really good class of seniors. So that class graduates. Mm. And so we're, you know, we had a good group that came in as freshmen that in 9-10. And then we brought a big group in in 10-11. So it was kind of interesting for me because I kind of came when they were kind of doing a little bit of a reset on the program. Okay. We kind of made this run. Now we're, we're going to build back up again. So we kind of taken the program took a little bit of a step back in ten eleven. We had a good year. Um, we finished a little over five hundred. You know, maybe maybe like seventeen and fifteen, something like that. It wasn't a great year, but you could see the promise was there. And we also knew that you know Coach Cerna, <clears throat> like I said, was bringing in a really good recruiting class. So we knew that ten uh, that eleven twelve we were going to be a little bit older, um, and we were going to. Uh, uh, we were still somewhat young, but we we're bringing in the parts. So <clears throat> I'll never forget th th this, that, uh, you know, I can't remember who we played first, but one of our very early games that year in, the, in, in 2011, obviously before the crash was against Rice University. Rice had a, you know, Rice had a really good team that year. And, you know, you don't want to dismiss them just because they're not a, a, a you know, a power five score or whatever. They had a really good team. And so, Kind of one of those games you're like, okay, you know, guys, make sure we're you know ready for this thing. Well, our kids came out and played phenomenal. I mean, one of the best games I've ever seen the Cowgirls play. Up and down the court, I think we won like uh, you could obviously check the official records. It was like ninety seven to sixty three or something like Significant that. Significant win. Yeah. It was crazy. Obviously, it ended up being the last game that Coach Budke and Coach Cerna um, ever saw the Cowgirls play. But I, you know, I don't. I hope this doesn't sound morbid, but it's I guess it's a good tribute that the program was in a great place and. That was the last game they saw. So. Was that here or there? In, in Stillwater. Here, yeah, here. Yeah, GIA, yeah. Well, it's training the – I imagine you do a lot of running for the for the basketball side of things, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of sprints. Yeah. <clears throat> and so would you be on the sidelines? Would you go to the games? Oh, yeah. I was, I'm was. i on the sideline for every at – the, at the end of the bench for every game. Uh, yes. I've, I've missed one game in my uh, 12 years of working with Cowgirl Basketball. <clears throat> and uh, that was in uh, December of twenty uh, d December of twenty seventeen. Um, my wife was about to give birth, and it could have happened any day. And uh, and uh, so that they played at Texas Tech on December twenty seventh, uh, two thousand seventeen. And I told Coach Latell, I said, Coach, I can't 
I can't go. I go, I got to see you. Coach Attell was great. He's like, no, you can't. You, you're, you'd be home with your wife because if that baby comes, you don't want to be in Lubbock, Texas. No offense, Lubbock, Texas, but yeah. you want to be there with her. So uh, I, I watched the era. Uh, I was at home for that game. That's the only game I've ever missed. And it was kind of funny not that because uh, I'm following the game on my phone. It wasn't televised. And we're up by like 40 points. You don't win by 40 in Lubbock. So I'm during the game, I'm texting our SID, our sports information director. I'm like, is this real? Am I following this correctly? He goes, yeah, this is crazy. So um, I kind of, t- you know, teased a <clears throat> coach to tell. I said, well, maybe you don't want me to come to any more games. I mean, if we're going to win by 40 in Lubbock, I guess you should <laughs> tell me to stay home. <laughs> but I got a, I got a funny story to tell you, though, on in terms of being on the bench during games. Okay. Um, so uh, <clears throat> in the summer of 2011, Jamie Blatnick uh, was going into his senior year of football and Jamie had to do an internship uh, and he wanted to do it in strength and conditioning. And Jamie was a big weightlifting fitness guy. So coach glass called me and said, Hey, you know, obviously I can't have Jamie training, but his teammates over here, he goes, so can you, I want you to take him and help him have him help you be your intern, help him with women's basketball. It was great. And if you've ever met Jamie, Jamie's got a big personality, great guy, you know, so <clears throat> the kids loved him. He, he did a great job with us. <clears throat> so um, he worked with us all summer. So the season starts <clears throat> and, uh, you know, so we go through our fall training and Jamie's obviously in his football season, <clears throat> fall training uh, practice starts. Well, football has Mondays off. So Jamie swung by practice one day on a Monday when he had some time and, and uh, and, uh, you know, just because he's Jamie and just kind of connected with the kids again. And uh, and uh, he had mentioned this to me before, but he goes, Coach, he's like, ask them. So I said, all right, Jamie. So I said, Coach Buggy, and if you've ever met Jamie, Jamie looks like The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, okay? okay. I mean, he's built like The Rock, too. Big man. And uh, so I said, okay. So I go, Coach, Coach Buggy, um, Jamie uh, was wanting to know if he could sit on the bench with us during games too. And Coach Budkey looked at me with that Coach Budkey smile and he goes, oh yeah. He goes, I got the two of you at the end of my bench. He goes, I'm popping off to everybody. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, but I'll tell you this, um, when Jamie's football season ended um, that year, he, he held true to his word. He came to every game and he was on the bench with us and, pulling chairs and towels and, you know, helping out. And, he, and, and it was really neat that the, the interest in the, 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 that he took with the team and, and uh, being there for the kids. It was really, really neat. Oh, while you're on the sideline, what would be some of the things you'd be just watching or would? Um, <clears throat> you know, I try to just be Johnny on the spot. <laughs> um, if, uh, if a kid catches a cramp and they say, coach, I need a quick stretch. Yeah. I'm here for you. Okay. <clears throat> um, if a kid, you know, if I can help with water, if I can help pull chairs, towels, um, uh, if a kid needs a, a protein bar, I always make sure I have my little stash of uh, nutrition stash right there that I can hand it out. Um, whatever kids need, whatever the coaches need during games. I mean, I try to stay out of the way because I'm not a coach. I'm not going to tell them what offense to run against that zone defense. That's not my job. Um uh, you know, I try to cheer and be positive for the kids, um, but whatever they need, whatever the coaches need. Um, <coughs> uh, we had a great player here a couple years ago named Natasha Mack. Uh, and we had these little energy chews from the Gatorade makes. Mack wanted these, wanted me to have these energy chews in my pocket so that every time out she could take one. Their little squares look like a, kind of like a gummy bear. And she wanted one at every time out. So I always had those in my pocket. Mac, here you go. Here's it. You know, and, and she'd have, and thanks coach. So, you know, just little stuff like that, whatever I can do to help the team win. But uh, yeah. <laughs> and they refer to you as coach. Yes. Coach. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any other memorable stories <laughs> from times in Gallagher from any, any particular game from the Bud Keys sure enough, error? Um, <clears throat> any OU games? Uh, well, we didn't beat OU my first, when the coach was here that first year. We didn't. We beat him that next year, but obviously, coach wasn't there. Um, yeah. I'll tell you this one, coach. Coach Budkey was funny. Okay, so we're down at Texas Tech in a, in you know 2011, my first year, and I had on a sweater, you know, trying to dress nice for the game, and, and uh, 
I guess my sweater was tight. I don't, I didn't intentionally wear a tight sweater to be a, you know, like muscle guy or whatever. Anyway, the Texas Tech, we, we line up for the national anthem and we're standing, Coach Budkey and Coach Littell and me are standing right in front of the Texas Tech student section. And so as we're getting ready for the national anthem, the Texas Tech student section is all over me, making fun of me for my tight sweater, say I look like I'm in the Russian mafia. I remember the one kid yelled, get this guy some vodka before he kills somebody. I'm like, <laughs> well, who are the two people that thought it was the funniest? Coach Budkey and Coach Littell are standing there laughing. Not only laughing, they're egging the kids on. I, I keep it going. I'm like, thanks, guys. <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, they, they, but I mean, they, they, he was a fun person to be around. Um, and uh, his youngest son, uh, Brett, used to come and train. Uh, I used to train him in the summertime. He'd come in and, uh, and, uh, when he was in middle school and high school. And he, Brett made me laugh because he had the same mannerisms as his dad. You know, you watch him shoot a basketball. He shot it exactly the same. It was like, this is eerie watching you move and do things. <laughs> the same sense of humor. Yeah. Wait, did he walk on? He walked onto the team. Right? Alex did. The, old, Alex the did. oldest okay. son, Alex did. Okay. I knew one of them yeah. had. I thought, I thought it was Alex. No, I'm not sure. Okay. I know no, no, I know I'm, one of them did. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I read somewhere that they did dodgeball games. Were you involved with that? Oh yeah. Just oh, as yeah. a team building sport yeah. or whatever. Yeah, we've yeah, we've done dodgeball. We <clears throat> you know, sometimes as a strength and conditioning coach, it's nice to, to uh, take a little step back and let the kids play a game, you know, and so we've done some dodgeball. We did dodgeball. And we have a game that I like called Ultimate Med Ball. And it's kind of like Ultimate Frisbee, only with a medicine ball. And, uh, you know, kids run around. It's kind of funny because they'll actually work harder at those games than they will, you know, if you're just telling them to get on the line and run sprints. But, you know, they're, they're having fun out there cutting and doing those things. So is, <clears throat> is it nutrition's part of this, too? Part of. <clears throat> yes, uh, there is definitely a nutrition aspect. Um, so we do have nutritionists on staff. So you don't have to deal with that as much. Yeah, and I mean, it's th that's their area of expertise. So it takes something off of my plate, um, and uh, and it's and you know that's their area of expertise. The uh, Jenny Boynton works with the women's basketball team, and, and you know sometimes it's easier for the young ladies to talk to a female than it is to talk to a male. Hundred percent understand that especially when it comes to those matters and, and nutrition. And sometimes there's issues that they just don't, that they're, that, that's kind of not my business in terms of the nutrition with the young ladies. So I, I really try to tell them, guys, you don't even have to worry about me on the nutrition aspect of it. You take care of it with Jenny uh, and, and you guys build a great relationship so that she can really handle that aspect of it. So, so like from day one, you, what you, do you, do they take, do you take measurements? So, you know, what kind of progress you're making or, and do you have to report that to the coach or just let, let the actions show? Um, so we'll, um, we'll take, uh, we will take measurements, um, in terms of like, we'll get their, their vertical jump and approach vertical jump. We'll, we'll test their strength. Um, we'll test their agility, how fast they can change direction. We'll test their sprints. <clears throat> and I'll keep track of that throughout their careers. So I'll have a, I'll have a spreadsheet that says, you know, uh, Taylor Collins came in, her vertical jump was this in her freshman year in 2020. And then as a senior in uh, <clears throat> 2024, here's her vertical jump, you know, so she can see tangible evidence and coaches can see, Hey, look, that's really, she's gotten better, you know, and, and improved. Um, we will do body fat measurements, um, working with women's sports. Uh, it's a very sensitive subject. Um, and, and that's, uh, I share that information with the nutritionist and the head coach and nobody else. Um, and I, I tell anybody, uh, that, that if we're going to, I'm going to share this with you, but we do not discuss this with the players. If we're going to discuss this with the players, the three of us sit down and we have a meeting first and we go over it, uh, because we're not going to do drive by comments on body fat or anything like that. I, I never want to make these young ladies feel uncomfortable or uh, ashamed or anything like that. It's all about athletic performance. And if there's an issue that needs to be addressed, 
then we we address it in a totally professional manner. But yeah, it's never never discussed. <laughs> so I'm thinking, when is your downtime? You don't, you don't have much. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, the month of May, um, when when the tennis season ends, that's when I have a little bit more downtime, um, and then I'll usually have a week of vacation in May. Um, We'll have a couple weeks here in August when summer training ends before school starts. We'll have a couple weeks of downtime then too. So you know, kind of you. So you you've seen quite a few come through your program and go on, yeah. and go on. Have any of them come back and said, "Can you be a reference for me for a, a job in strength and conditioning?" Um, I haven't had anybody come back as a strength and conditioning coach um, officially. So Lauren Goodwin is doing some fitness work. Um, I don't know if you remember Lauren played point guard for us a few years back. She's doing some work in the fitness industry. <clears throat> and we actually tried a few, gosh, when was that, that we tried to get her to come back. We had a, a paid internship position open. And I said, and, uh, and and that was one of the first questions. Any of your former players that you recommend? And I said, Lauren Goodwin. I mean, that <laughs> popped into my brain right off the bat. And uh, the timing didn't work out because Lauren was still playing professionally. And she, she, you know, and I'm, yeah, hundred percent. You still play professional basketball. Don't quit that to come take an internship position. But um, so, <coughs> Lauren, if you watch this, well, we're, we still got our eye on you. <laughs> That's good. And, and then Andrea went on to do women's national what at WNBA. Yeah, yep, yeah, WNBA. Yes. WNBA. Yep. So Andrea, uh, Tony Young played the WNBA for. For several years, um, Tiffany Bias uh, played in the WNBA, uh, Brittany Martin, uh, Natasha Mack. So we've had some good, had good, some good, good ones. Yeah. Yes. So let's work on to November the seventeenth. Okay. Take us, take us through that day for you. Okay. Um, so I'll start November sixteenth. Um, uh, that Thursday, <coughs> Coach uh, Coach Budke took our staff out to lunch at McAllister's. As I told you, he, he enjoyed teasing me. I ate an entire of sandwich, and uh, he teased me about that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, then after lunch, um, he and Coach Cerno were going to take off to go recruiting. Um, Coach Littell ran that practice that day on that Thursday. Um, you know, so went to bed Thursday night, you know, thinking, you know, Friday practice. Had a game on Saturday. <coughs> um, so... Uh, I usually get up about four in the morning, um, and uh, on that particular day, I got up. My alarm went off, and I'd missed uh, I'd missed eight phone calls, um, four from Amber Carter and four from Coach Littell. And obviously, as common sense will tell you, if you miss that many calls at that time of day from those people, something's not good. Um, so I called Coach Littell, <clears throat> um, and his words will be forever. You know, seared into my memory, he said, "Nick, there was a plane crash. Coach Budke and Coach Cerner are gone. Come to the locker room uh, as soon as you can." Mm-hmm. So I threw on my clothes, went to the locker room. Probably got there oh four thirty, little five, some somewhere there. I don't remember the exact time. <clears throat> and uh, quite a few of the players and staff members were already in there. And you know, as people trickled in. I'll never forget, it wasn't the sobbing and the crying, you know, some people were, but it was just so many people, it was just surreal. Mm -hmm. Like, this doesn't feel real. Am I going to wake up from this, this nightmare is, I, you know, I don't believe it. Right. I I don't know how to describe it, but it was like, you just sat there stunned. Um, And uh, I just, you just couldn't believe it was real. Um, And then, you know, Coach Littell came and addressed the team. Um, uh, then Coach Holder, Mike Holder, the athletic director, came and addressed us. I um, uh, can't remember the, uh, the the reverend's name, but he came and spoke to us. And then uh, uh, we kind of sat there for a little while, and <clears throat> we had a little break. Uh, they told us not to leave the building, but we had a little break. And so I went and called my mom. And just to assure her that I was okay, that it wasn't, I wasn't on the plane, obviously, if I'm calling you, but uh, that it wasn't a team thing, that I'm okay. Um, then I called my father, and uh, my father kind of had some, has, 
had unique insight to the situation because he had survived the uh, Wichita State football team plane crash in 1970. Mm-hmm. And so I, I remember asked my dad, I said, you know, what do I do? And uh, dad said, he said, you got to be strong for those kids right now. He goes, that's the most important thing. He goes, when my coach died in that plane crash, he goes, I lost a father figure. He goes, your kids have just lost a father figure. Mm-hmm. And, and he said, you need to be strong for them. And whatever you're feeling, you got to put them first. I said, okay. So I was, thought it was great advice. Um, so we kind of reconvened and one little side thing that I want to say, and I don't know if you'll interview Amber Carter, <clears throat> we all kind of had this opportunity to sit back and grieve. The one person that never got to sit back and really grieve was Amber because she had to organize everything. Mm. You know, somebody has to, somebody, we, has, somebody to. has to do those things. And that was Amber's job with our team. That was her position was, you know, she got flights wherever we went, hotels, food. So I always think about how strong Amber was at this whole time because she never got that opportunity. You know, she had to do all this logistics stuff. I mean, and you know, it's, it's amazing. Cause you know, you think about it in those situations. Well, like, Later in the day, we, we got on a bus to go to <clears throat> see the Budkey family. Well, buses don't just magically show up. Uh, we Amber had to call. She had to get food for our team, mm-hmm. um, you know, and feed our kids and, and organize when we're going to go here, you know. And, and it, I mean, when I think about what Amber did at that time, it's just amazing. You know, her strength and the way she took care of our team. And, you know, while we're all grieving, She's on the phone with uh, McAllister's getting food for us, you know, and and keeping it together because, you know, this has to be done. And I I, I think about Amber, you know, how amazing she is. And she's an amazing human being, but how amazing she was at that time. Um, But uh, so we had a, I can't remember, we kind of, and we came back and reconvened. And then one of the girls asked me if I'd go rebound for her because she wanted to go shoot. Mm. And I mean, that was kind of for therapy. She's like, I just, I need to go get in the gym and shoot baskets. I, I don't know what else to do. I'm, what, what do I do? I said, absolutely. So we, she, I probably rebounded for her for about an hour and we talked and she just told me kind of her life story. It was interesting, you know, and, <clears throat> you know, just get to know a kid better. And it was, um, then I actually gave her. Then we kind of started shuttling the kids back to the, their dorm rooms that morning um, because the word had gotten out. It was on ESPN and and uh, the media was getting wind of it. So we kind of were getting the kids. You know, we we don't want you know you don't want some random reporter waiting outside their 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 dorm rooms. You know, so we kind of were shuttling the kids back and getting them to their dorm rooms and uh, helping them with that. And and uh, later that day we we met up and went to the Budkey house and. Uh, saw Shelly and, and, and Alex and uh, Brett and Sarah and, and just, uh, you know, again, it was, it was surreal. I don't, you don't know what to say. I don't, you know, I'm not a wordsmith and I just don't know what to say in that situation. And, and uh, so you just tell them how much you love them and that mm-hmm. how much you love Kurt and uh, Miranda and, and uh, <laughs> how much you enjoyed your time with them. Um, that evening, uh, we went to uh, the football game was that evening against Iowa State. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, yeah, I remember. And uh, so we met in the locker room. Uh, they brought pizza in for us and everything. And uh, again, Amber, you know, yeah, organized this, get pizza for us and everything. And I'll never forget, though, that, you know, <laughs> the, the kids are we're watching the game and it's a really good football game, goes into overtime and everything. But I think about half our team was asleep. And I just thought, that's right. These kids have just been through this whole day that started at four in the morning and it's, you know, 10 at night and they just mentally so exhausted. They were just, a lot of them fell asleep in their chairs there and that. And, but uh, <clears throat> we all kind of went home Friday evening and Saturday morning we had a practice. Uh, and I say practice, we, we just got together and on court and with basketballs and coach had some very basic drills and we just kind of were there for each other just to, <clears throat> make sure that nobody was sitting alone in their mm-hmm. apartment or dorm by themselves and uh, just kind of being together. And we had, uh, you know, like I said, we had a little practice and uh, and worked together and, and ran around a little bit and got moving. And uh, 
kind of reconvened uh, that day for lunch. And then I remember that evening, uh, Coach Ford, uh, the men's basketball coach at the time, he was really, really sweet to us uh, <clears throat> during the whole, the whole process. Um, I'll always be grateful to him and, and have a great opinion of Coach Ford for the way he treated us during this this whole uh, ordeal. But that that evening, he rented out um, the bowling alley, <laughs> and uh, he had so much food, Buffalo Wild Wings, Pizza Hut, everything you could imagine there. I mean, it, it was it was a nice deal, and we we bowled, and the kids could kind of kind of have fun and everything like that. So <clears throat> it was a it was a you know just a, it was a nice it was a great gesture on his part and. and uh, we, we we kind of a I don't know can have fun in these situations, but it was a, a nice, lighthearted evening. Uh, diversion for a little while. Diversion. That's a great way to say it. Yeah. Um, we Coach Bug, he was Catholic, and Coach Cerner was Catholic. So on Sunday morning, uh, we met and went to went to church on campus, and it was really nice, uh, nice service, and uh, the priest uh, you know, thanked us for all uh, the team for coming. I don't really remember too much more from Sunday. Um, I know that uh, you know we kind of got back to work the next week, but it was it was uh, it was difficult because you know we had functions going on all the time as well. Um, in terms of uh, you know we had the funeral, and then we had the um, memorial service. Memorial service at uh, Calgary Arena. And, so there was just just a lot of different functions going on. So that, and I think that next week might have been Thanksgiving week as well. If I'm doing that, I, I, getting close anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I, I know that there's just that that kind of, it kind of became a whirlwind after that. But um, yeah, then I remember you know, uh, <clears throat> getting back after it and, and uh, playing our first game. Uh, gosh, two weeks later maybe uh, against Morgan State, and. Uh, you know, and it was, you know, they had the, the uh, patch on their jerseys or uh, no, on their warm-up shirts. I think mean, they had a warm-up shirt uh, honoring Coach Bud Key and Coach Littell, which, is, <coughs> which, I, which was really neat. And, um, and then, you know, throughout the season, you know, like I remember the University of Connecticut had a little OSU patch on their jerseys. So I thought that was really neat that their coach did that and that their teams were honoring us throughout the season. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we had a good season that year, uh, and uh, we, you know, uh, we we were on a, on the bubble, on the cusp of making the NCAA tournament. Didn't make the NCAA tournament, but our team came together. Uh, we were, we were invited to play in the WNIT, uh, the Women's uh, National Invitational Tournament. So uh, we came together before that tournament and said, uh, "We're we're going to make a commitment to win this thing." Um, you know, some teams like okay, WNIT, whatever, you know, something is hate. We we said you know we're going to honor Coach Budke and Coach and uh, and uh, Coach Serna and we're going to you know go out there and, and uh, play play great and finish the season strong and uh, and the kids did that and I remember uh, those six games it was those were that was one of the most fun times of my coaching career those six games there at the end and and uh, Coach Holder uh, you know at, in that tournament you you bid on if you're going to play at home or, or you know if you know we played let's say we played uh, University of San Diego in the, I think in the semifinals and uh, you know obviously San Diego puts in a, a bid and we put in a bid and whoever I guess has the higher bid obviously gets the game at home and I remember Coach Holder's like no you're playing all these games at home we're, we're outbidding everybody to get these games in Stillwater so it was it was, it was a nice uh, neat deal that he did there too and uh, yeah we played all the and the fans came out and it was it was a great atmosphere and, and uh we, we won that tournament pretty handily, and uh, I was really proud of those kids when they finished that season and uh, came together at the end and honored Coach Budke and Coach Cerna. That was, uh, it was really neat. That's good. Well, the first game that they played afterwards, was it here or was yeah. it a, what? Was in it Stillwater. Here too? In Stillwater, yeah. Do you remember much about it? Um, yeah, it? It was emotional, and we didn't, you know, I think we ended up winning by 20, 25 points. We did not play well because the kids were really tight and really nervous. I remember we missed a lot, <laughs> missed a lot of shots in that, but understandably so. They were they were nervous, you know. They and they were they. I think that they wanted to honor the coaches so bad, you know, had this perfect game and come out and honor them and that they were just so tight and, and you know, you know, you love them for that. But uh, they they played well and, and got the win and, and uh, kind of got those nerves out and. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, prep, prepping for that, what, I mean, did you have to teach, you know, work with the emotional side too as you built built toward that game? Uh, yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is the right approach, but I knew that, you know, you don't want to yell at the kids or, 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 or beat them down, but there's also, hey, we got it. We, we if if we're going to honor these coaches and do things the right way, then we got to get back to work, okay? And so, I felt like I had a responsibility to, okay, guys, we're you know, we're gonna we're, we 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 we're gonna we got a, a lifting workout today, okay? So let's 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 come in here and focus and and, and get after it, okay? Uh, for this forty five minutes. Okay, let's 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 focus on this and 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 focus and, and focus on the task at hand right now. Mm. <clears throat> and I don't know if that's the right approach. I felt like I had a duty to these kids to to help them get back on track. That you know, I, and I know we we grieve and and I know that that's an important part of the process. But at the same token, I do think it you know you got you got to you got to get back to it. And, uh, and that's what your dad had had advised you to do too, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering after the I wasn't at that game at, at the end of it. Did anything? Did they do anything in particular? To... Um, not not at the first game, but at the um, <clears throat> at the WNIT championship. Um, you know, it's tradition in basketball. You cut down the cut nets down. for the championship. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, the we won the championship, and the first person to cut down the net uh, to cut her piece was Shelly Budkey, coach's okay. wife. Uh, okay. So that and there's a great picture of that. Uh, up, up in the coach's offices of, of Shelly cutting down the net. Uh, so I've always liked that picture. <laughs> well, were you were you aware of the Owen and Paula brand sitter? I mean, I know they had season tickets, but I don't know where they were in relation to your line of vision. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I did not know them very That's well. That's fine. Uh, and I, I, hadn't, uh, I hadn't met them. Um, and I, I, you know, I guess regret that, that I didn't get to know them because I know they were very supportive of the program, obviously, if they were, you know, flying. <laughs> well, your focus was yeah. on the court, not yeah. behind you, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know they sat, I, I've always, I've been told that they sat right behind the scorer's table. Oh. So I, uh, I, yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't really see them. No, you were focused on the court. Yeah. Uh, so the memorial service, do you remember anything in particular about it that you want to share? Um, um, yeah, I've got a couple memories from that. Number one, um, uh, coach, uh, uh, I, I thought Coach Latell did a neat thing, and it's a tradition that's that's kept on. You know, you typically have the moment of silence. Well, Coach, you know, you, you want energy, you know. So Coach Latell had a moment of, of of joy, of praise for their lives and, and the things that they brought to Oklahoma State. So everybody stood up and cheered, you know. And, it, and I thought that was a neat way to honor them, to, to thank them, and, and that, that you know, just not just a moment of silence, but we stand up and cheer, and, and you know, and, and <laughs> be excited for what they did for us and thank them and, and, and that. Um, so that's a tradition that's kept on. Um, <clears throat> uh, I know that you know. University of Oklahoma is obviously a big rival of ours and everything like that, and they've had some great women's basketball programs. But uh, Sherry Cole, uh, the head coach at OU at the time, uh, brought her team over to the memorial service at, at Gallagher Ibe Arena, and they actually came down to the locker room um, after the game or after the service, and uh, you know, kind of interacted with our team. And, and they were very, you know, all, all, you put all rivalries aside, everything aside at this moment, and they were. And she had a lot of class in the way she handled it. I was really impressed with her. And, um, actually had an opportunity to meet her at our strength and conditioning coaches convention this last spring. And, and I relayed that story to her that I really thought that was neat the way she handled that uh, process, not neat, but uh, uh, showed a lot of class. And I really had a lot of respect for her for the way she handled that process. But, okay. Then on up to a few years later, they dedicated the memorial. Mm -hmm. I think it's what, five or six years later, something like yeah. that. Roughly, roughly yeah. like that. Yeah. So what did you do? from that day did you attend yes yes I I don't uh, I don't really remember too much from that day what I can really tell you on that is that you know every year we go out there on November 17th and, and just take a moment as a team um, and it's you know obviously none of the players that are here now were here at that time, at that time and you know so 
but they need to understand and appreciate the history um, and not to be morbid or anything like that, but just understand, hey, here's this tragedy that happened. Here's why we remember. Here's what these banners mean in, in Gallagher Ibe Arena. Okay, you see them remember the four, you, you know, you, we wear the patch, but here's what it actually means. Here's who these people were so that the, these players can fully understand that, that, that part of our history and, and, and uh, the, what we went through at that time. And, and, and so that we, again, as you're doing, so that we never forget, we never forget these people that they're not lost to time, not lost to history. It's a, it's a long process too. I mean, two, it's been 11, <coughs> yeah, two 11 years now, or one mm -hmm. on 11. Yeah. We'll be 11. Yeah. Do yeah. <laughs> so no regrets having come to OSU? Absolutely not. No, no I, I, I love it here. And <clears throat> uh, I've gotten to work with some great coaches here and, <clears throat> you know, gotten to work under Rob Glass has you know, been a phenomenal experience for me. And, uh, and uh, having my family here, I, I love raising my family in Stillwater. Um, love wearing the orange. So. Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, would you see Coach Budke or would he come in and say, Work on this, or nah. He, no, no. <laughs> he would tell me that 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 that's your deal. That strength and conditioning is your deal. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, he all he told me is I want my kids in shape for practice. Okay. So you did, did, did he come in himself and do any workouts? He walked the track. I like to tease him. I say, Coach, this isn't a mall. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know how people walk the mall. So I, no, he liked to walk the track. That's but that okay. he didn't he didn't work out. No. Well, did she? Well, you... Miranda, yes. Oh, yeah. She, she, she did. Yeah, she, 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 she was on those treadmills all the time. <clears throat> I don't remember her doing much weight training, but oh, yeah, she loved the treadmill. She was down here at working on her fitness all the time. <laughs> Probably with her with her laptop or, <laughs> right at the same time. <laughs> well, the, the toughest part during all that was probably that first morning. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I just... Uh, I guess it was just so surreal. He didn't know, is this real? I mean, you know, is this. <laughs> and to have it happen again, you know, from 2001. Yeah. And to have that connection with your, with your dad. Yeah. Too, that was. Yeah. Yeah, dad, yeah, dad, like I said, dad just said those kids are the most important thing. And he was right, you know, just make sure those kids are all right. And take care of them first. And they showed up like they were supposed to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What would be some of the things that you would do, like, on a regular basis? I was, when you mentioned agility, I'm not sure what that would, what kind of exercises <laughs> that would be, zipping in and out or what. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean, you, you can set up cones in different formations and, you know, run as fast as you can from this cone to this cone, or maybe you shuffle from this cone to this cone and back and, you know, just, you know. However, you can make the kids change direction quicker. That's that's the goal of your agility work. Uh, and I've heard of suicide runs. <laughs> suicide, yeah, yeah. And to the point that they, to the point that you throw up. Well, yeah, you, you <laughs> throwing up is not a good thing uh, in in terms of training. Uh, that that's a marker that that something's wrong. <laughs> so so contrary to popular belief. Um, our goal is not to make kids puke. Uh, that's that's not a good thing. We want them to work hard. We want them to get after it, great intensity. But if they puke, you're kind of, hey, what's wrong? Or did you eat something funky? Did you not eat? Are you feeling all right? You know, there's it's kind of a marker that you want to kind of check on them. Yeah. Step back. And yeah. Go. So. <laughs> and do they do the bleachers? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We do the stadiums. Yep. Yep. That's, uh, that's been a... Uh, Coach Glass does the stadiums every Friday morning with football, and so I've, I I love that, and so I've, uh, I I do that with basketball too. The the women's. Uh huh. So well, you can't do that in July. It's too hot. Well, you do it early early in the morning. Oh, that's true. Like this, <laughs> this, this, this morning yeah. would have been fine. Uh -huh. It's sixty five. Yeah, before that, before the sun starts to peak over Gallagher, you have a little window when you got that nice shade in there. Oh, it's, yeah, it's great. So how long does it take you to run up to the top? Uh, well, it depends on the kid. No, uh, you. Oh, me? Oh, about, I can get up there in about, oh, 13 seconds. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Skipping a step. Oh, yeah. 
it's one of the crazy things about running stadiums. If you walk it, it's actually a lot more taxing than to run it. Because you run, you kind of build up some momentum, you know, skip steps. Yeah. You walk, you're uh, just grind and grind and grind. <laughs> that, that makes sense, yeah. Okay. Well, do you have a favorite memory since your time here? One or two? Uh, uh, just, are you talking women's basketball? Just in general. In general? Well, in general. Um, I'll go through a few things uh, that are <clears throat> great memories here. Uh, one great memory, obviously, is winning that WNIT championship. Um, that's you know that was a that was a great day, um, and just the the honor to honor those coaches like that. Um, we beat Baylor here in 2015. Um, that was a, that was that was a, a very fun game. Um, we know it's the first time we beat, we hadn't beaten Baylor here in uh, six years, and had well hadn't beaten them overall in six years, and uh, it was my first time to beat Baylor. So. You know, and they've been the kings of the conference for so many years, and and uh, so it was it was, and it was a game that it, boy, it was an ugly, tough, hard fought game. But our kids, you know, really fought it out, and so that was a great memory. Um, <clears throat> you know, working with women's tennis, I've had a lot of great memories with women's tennis. Um, in particular, um, well, I'll tell you one of my first before that beautiful facility was built over there. We played at the Coleman Center, and. Uh, we weren't very good to start with. We were, in fact, you know, pretty bad. Uh, but we built ourselves into a national power, which is cool, which has been a fun process. Uh, but I think it was my it was my second year. Yeah, it was my second year. We uh, we beat Texas, who was four in the country, at the Colvin Center. And uh, it was, <laughs> I think it was about maybe four people in the stands at that match. And, uh, you know, nowadays we play Texas. You know, or anybody, we get you know four or five hundred people at matches, but you know there's about four or five of us that day, and uh, and uh, we we beat Texas, and, and it was just me and the uh, head coach's wife Sarah Young rushing the court because you know obviously <laughs> there was nobody there, and uh, but it was that was a great experience, and then in uh, 2016 uh, <clears throat> we went on and won the uh, or we won uh, the Big 12 regular season Big 12 tournament championship. And then lost in the national championship match, uh, and that 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 whole run through that that na that national tournament was was so much fun. It was over in Tulsa. We had so many fans at the at the matches, and you know tennis uh, uh, is a uh, very proper sport, if we should say right. Mm -hmm. And so you you can't just cheer throughout. You know, like in a football game when the offense is on the field, you know the opposing offense and everybody's like, ah, you know try. You can't do that at tennis. You got to wait till the point is scored, okay, and then you can cheer after the point. But while the ball's in play, you can't cheer. Well, our fans didn't know that, so we hit a great shot. They're going, yeah, and the girl returns it, you know, and so the ball is still in play. And so we got, you know, at the end, what what happens is you get point penalties, mm -hmm. okay, you know. So I don't know how we 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 set a record for point penalties, but it was great because our fans were into it. You know, it's like, oh, who cares? One point. Yeah, get after it. You guys are up there. You guys have helped us win more points than you've cost us. So, you know. <laughs> well, you have to educate us, I yeah. guess. Well. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> we will. But, yeah. 2016. So, here we are 10, 11 years later. How do you think the, how, how do you think the university's done at keeping the promise to remember and honor, honor the four? I think it's been great. Um, you know, you, every year we have a, a nice, uh, a, you know, we have a game that honors them. Mm -hmm. um, whichever game kind of falls around that, that that time frame. And I know that they invite everybody back and, and uh, the, the, the Brandstetters and Cernas and Bud Keys and, you know, have a <clears throat> have a nice uh, meal for them. Um, you know, obviously we have the banner up in GIA, which is a great honor. And, and you have the uh, the memorial out uh, out at um out there at, uh, by the Wrestling Hall of Fame, it's a, you know it's a great honor for them, and the the flames are always lit, and or the lights are always on in that. And I know Coach Tell always did a great job of of you know keeping that promise as well that you know hey we're going to always have this day where we go out there and, and uh, honor them. So um, I think that that uh, you know I think that you know everybody has has, has contributed to to make it make sure that it's uh, you know it's that, that, that we've honored those four. And then someone will have to educate the new the new coach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she may already know. Yeah, but, I'm sure. Um, yeah, and she's. I think she, she's an extremely yeah. respectful person. So yeah, I'm, it's hard and, not to know. I guess. I guess you know. I, I, right now, I'm the only one that 
went through it on staff. Uh, so, you know, anything that she has that she needs to, you know, be educated on, I'm, I'm definitely there to help out. And, you know, that, so. I don't know, do they ring the bells, the library bells for, for in recognition of that too? That's a great I, question. I, I think, yeah. uh, I think they do for the 10, so okay. I'm assuming they do for the four. Mm -hmm. I guess I should, I, I should know that too, but. Uh. You're usually not around to hear it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know on that. Okay, well, I'll have to find that out too. All right, we've covered lots of things. How did you yourself deal with all of this? I mean, how did what helped you get through it? Um, uh, well, I mean, talking to family, talking to my dad, talking to my mom, um, you know, Coach Glass was great support. We've got a great strength staff in terms of being a family in our weight room, so you know, at a time like that, everybody came together and, hey, what do you need from me? You know, how, how can I help you out? Um, and I don't want to say I never dealt with my feelings, but making sure that I sh that I was focused on those, those young people, the kids, the players, I think that really helped me out too, to give me focus that, hey, I, that here's my task. Uh, you know, as I talked about Amber having her tasks, you know, and I grieved um, and, uh, and thought about them a lot and what they what they meant to me but at the same token i know that i also had a, had 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 a, a 12 young people that really needed me too uh, to be strong for them and and uh so i i made sure that, that i was strong for them and and uh so I, I guess that helped me a lot okay well we can't we can't stop without talking about the orange blazer do you have any stories about it no, I, I and, and I don't know where that came about. That came before you. Yeah, that yeah, and uh, you know I, I always say this about Oklahoma State: America's brightest orange. Lean into it, yeah. right? This is us. <laughs> uh, so absolutely, orange blazer, love it. You know, yeah. uh, let's be proud of this orange. I love this orange. I I, I mean I we got a jacket last year <laughs> that I won't wear because it's gray and black and white with an OSU, with a black and white OSU logo. Oh, that could be any school in America. Where's the orange at? It's got to have orange on it, right? Right. Uh, we're America's brightest orange. Yeah, brightest Lean orange. into that. Be it. It's us. <laughs> so I love it. So. <laughs> All right, then. If you got anything else you want to add that I haven't thought to ask? I don't. I think that covers it. I wanted to know about when you travel with the team and hotel workouts. Okay. Um, well, so, uh, hotel workouts. So, they are they are somewhat of a rarity because um, if you think when you look at a travel itinerary, you're let's say we're going to Iowa State. So you know you have an hour and fifteen minute flight to Ames. You get off or to uh, Des Moines or is it Iowa City or Des Moines. I can't remember where you fly into up there. And then you have a forty five minute bus trip. You know, you go to practice. In practice, you go to dinner. Wake up the next day. You got a, a breakfast. You got a shoot around. You got about an hour. Then you got pregame meal. Then you got about another hour. And then you get on the bus, go to the game, and then go uh, play the game. Then you're on the bus to the, to the airport. Airport home. So some trips are less than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe if there's a kid that's red shirting, we'll do we'll do something in the hotel. Um, now, where the red shirt workouts will come into play, or the, the hotel workouts will come into play, um, last year or two years ago, we went uh, from uh, uh, we we played at University of Texas on a Wednesday, and then we were traveling to Austin or to, to Lubbock uh, to play Texas Tech. So, we played on Wednesday. Thursday, we we were in the hotel, so we typically lift on Thursdays and do a lot of recovery work. And so we did a hotel workout on on on, on Thursday, and then uh, and then you know got on the bus. Now, anytime you do a hotel workout, and I do a lot of these with tennis uh, because they take a little bit longer road trips, you just got to be creative and you got to scout. OK, you got to go check out your facility. You can't just show up at your, your you know, like you would for a normal workout and think that they're going to have all the weights and the bars and the med balls and all these things that you want. So you, know, you got to do your you got to do your recon mission. OK, and then you got to say, OK, well, we got this the, we got a, our med balls only go up to six pounds so here's and they don't well they don't have this they don't have a rack so obviously you can't do your squats and you know you kind of had so you have to figure out your workout and then you know create it around your uh what you got <laughs> so you know if in the pool any any 
uh, yeah, we've done some pool stuff. So that that funny that you say that. So we go down to Austin, and you know Austin, t- you know it's I, I know it's, it was in January, but Austin is typically warm year round, right? <clears throat> they had this the, the the hotel that we stayed at. The pool was outdoors on this on the you know on the top floor or whatever <clears throat> on the roof. So the girls were like, "Hey, can we do a pool?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll put something together in the pool for you guys." So we go, we get there. I go, I go, uh, the day of the workout, I, I'd planned my weight room workout, my weight room workout and my pool workout. I had two workouts because of weather and sure enough, it was a cold rainy day. I'm like, girls, they're like, Oh, we'll be okay. I'm like, no, somebody gets sick up there and can't play in Lubbock because the, the oh. moral and strength coach had you guys out in 50 degree weather in a pool while it was raining. And I didn't know. I said, so we'll just work out here. So anyway, we worked out in the weight room. <laughs> And the girls, they all went in, jumped in for 10 seconds and then got out. I'm like, all right, guys, come on. <laughs> you have kids, it's fine. Well, you'd have to do them in groups just about because most of those weight groups yeah. are not oh, yeah. Big. Yeah. So, yeah, so what we've done before, too, and on some of these longer trips is <clears throat> I'll have a group come in and uh, they'll do their workout. Then the next, then they'll, they'll like have a little rotation. So like... <clears throat> This group will watch film. This group will do yoga. This group will work out. So then they'll just kind of rotate through 30 minute block. Okay. You know, then film goes to yoga. Yoga goes to lift. Lift goes to film. And, and they just kind of rotate through on the, on the th- uh, every 30 minutes. <laughs> so. so yoga? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love yoga. Huh. Oh, yeah. And great recovery. Makes, makes my old body feel good. <laughs> and they don't, they like it too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I hadn't thought about that being a part of it. Oh, yeah. It's, and when you see movies where ballet has been incorporated, yeah. but yoga. Yeah, yoga is great for their bodies and the recovery and the stretching. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, we do it somewhat regularly with basketball. Uh, women's tennis, they love yoga. We do it once a week. Yeah. And it takes some mental mm-hmm. mental work, too, I guess. Yeah, and it, well, and it's great because it is, it's just relaxing and just focus on the stretch. Just relax your mind, relax your body. So, gosh, it's a lot of things you don't. <laughs> that's in the stands. Don't think about, even though we know a little bit about basketball, but not not as much as you ever did. <laughs> so, okay, that pretty much covers mine. I usually end with the question: Is how do you want to be remembered? How do you want people to remember Nick? Um, I kind of touched on this before, but I, I want these kids to remember that, that I cared about them, uh, in terms of the players that I cared about them, that I loved them, uh, that they had a positive experience with me <clears throat> that, um, if I ever got on them, that it was because I wanted them to be better. Uh, it wasn't personal cause I <laughs> disliked them. Um, I want them to know that, that, uh, that, that, uh, I want them to be successful in every aspect of life and that. Uh, part of the way that you need to do that is to hold people accountable. So when I held you accountable in the weight room, it was so that you would have a life lesson to be accountable in life. And uh, I hope that they know that I love them. I'm sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> Are they will now when they, re- yeah. when, they, when they listen to this? <laughs> and it all goes back to the coach at K-State giving you an opportunity. Yep, Coach Snyder. Yep. Yeah, so... There's always one person that's very important. Okay, well, I appreciate you coming in today. Well, thank it's been you. Great. Uh, thank you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate what you're doing for, for this, uh, this project. It's, uh, okay, round two. One of the things about strength and conditioning is if you don't have the backing of your head coaches, you're, you're, you know, it's your program's not going to be successful, uh, your strength and conditioning program, that is. Um, because, you know, you think about it, there's two carrots for the kids. Uh, number one is playing time. Number two is scholarship. And I don't control either of those. Um, so, you know, if the head coach doesn't back you up, you know, then then your program's not going to be great and be successful. So I, I appreciate that quote from Coach Budke. And, and, and that has to do with because Coach Budke was bought into me. And uh, and if, if the kids know that the head coach, if the, that what you do is, what I do is important, they'll, they'll make it important to them too. But if they know that the head coach doesn't really care about strength and conditioning, that if I skip a workout or if I don't feel like going today or if I just kind of uh, halfway at workout and there's not going to be any consequence from the head coach, then whatever. 
you know, then, then they, they, they won't be bought in. But if, if your coaches are bought in, then, then you'll have a really successful program. And if they don't, if they, if they don't come to your, to your workout time, do you report, yeah. do you tell on them? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, one of the things I was, you know, I like to handle discipline myself and, and, uh, you know, if a kid shows up late or skips a workout or, or, you know, does something inappropriate, then I, I you know, I, I prefer to handle that. Now I always communicate with the coaches and tell them, Hey, you know, such and such was late today and here's what she had to do. And the response from coach, a lot of coaches is, do I need to do anything? And I say, no, I handled it. And I, I want to be stand on my own and it's not an ego thing, but if I don't want the, I want the kids to know that, Hey, I'm standing on my own two feet here. Okay. Just because I'm just, just the strength coach doesn't mean you can run over me that I will handle this. Uh, and you know, I don't have to go run into the, co- the head coach to tattle on you, but I always want to know, want them to know that, yes, we are communicating too. So don't think that you can act a certain way down here and it's not going to get back, back on you. <laughs> no, it doesn't take them long to learn that no, lesson, no, does it? No. Does it? <laughs> okay, since we referenced the quote, let me read it so it'll be in, in the record, okay? okay? In October 2011, Coach Budke, in an interview he did, he, he, he stated this they, on strength and conditioning. They really buy in. Nick does an unbelievable job with women's basketball, the best I have ever had in 27 years of coaching. They buy in partly because they now know how strong they have to be to win in this league, but they buy in because he is a great teacher down there also, and they enjoy working with him. So, I appreciate that. Thanks, Coach. Yep. So, anything else? No, no. I think that. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. No, I appreciate it. Thank you.